How do and welcome to a bit more Yorkshire Brass once again. David Hoyle with you with show number 220 this week in our online YouTube series. Thanks for joining me. We started off with an absolute belter of a piece of music. Goes like the clappers, doesn't it? Folk Festival by Dmitry Shostakovich, arranged for brass band by the great Howard Snell, was played by the Williams Fairy Band. Lots to come in the next couple of hours. Thanks for your dedications, your requests, and just your general chit chat in the email and online groups. We'll talk more about those in a little while, but let's get straight on with the first request of the week, which is from Carl in Bolton. I love this march, this Carl. It's underplayed, and I just think the story behind it is really interesting. Yes, the Washington Greys were formed as a militia unit in 1822 in Philadelphia. They were very popular indeed. They should be. They had a good march named after them as well. Claudio Graffula was the composer, and the Kirk and Tillich band from Scotland are playing here. Here we go with Washington Greys. <laughs> Thank you. 
Washington Greys, written by Claudio Grafulla and played there by the Kirk and Tillock Band. Great stuff, requested by Carlin Bolton on the email, yorkshirebrass at gmail.com. That's the address to use if you have any requests, dedications or any input to the show whatsoever. We love to hear from you. And uh, this next piece of music, well, this is just over 40 years old. Dennis has been in touch about this one. Any chance of playing this piece of music in the middle of July, as it'll be my birthday, and uh, it will end in a zero, and it will be a bit of a jubilee as well, but I'm not telling you which one. How dare you, Dennis? How dare you? Lam and Saltair Band are playing here. Philip Spark made this composition. He was commissioned, actually, by the GUS Band, on the occasion of their Golden Jubilee in 1983. This is called the Jubilee Overture. Thank you. 
The Jubilee Overture by Philip Spark, the Hammond Saltair Band, were playing there. It was commissioned by the GUS Band to celebrate their Golden Jubilee back in 1983. Thanks to Dennis for that request. Next up, we're going across the pond to America. We say hello to Curtis Trout. Curtis is in Roseville in Minnesota. Hello, my friend. Thank you very much indeed for a lovely email. Lots of content and some really lovely memories for you in there. Curtis says, sometime around... The year 2000 or 2001, I had the pleasure to hear and meet Russell Gray when he was in Illinois performing as a guest soloist as part of a world tour. I don't remember the specific piece he introduced, but it was great, absolutely wonderful. And Curtis wants us to play and share some music with Russell Gray performing on his wonderful cornet. I think you're going to love this one. Jean-Baptiste Arben was a great composer and Russell made two recordings with the Leyland Band of his music. This is one of the tracks from one of them. It's called Casino Polka. Yeah, that's grand, isn't it? The first solo spot of the week featured Russell Gray with the Leyland Band playing the music of Jean-Baptiste Arben. It was called Casino Polka and Curtis Trout in Roseville in Minnesota made that particular request. Auntie Dot's up next. She's in Beverly. Hello, Flower. How are you doing? And you've requested a lovely piece of music which you remember very well from a lovely film back in the late 70s. I think it was 1978, Dot, to be honest, when this one came out. Written by Stanley Myers and Derek Broadbent made this lovely arrangement for brass band played here by the Shepherd Group Band. Cavatina from The Deer Hunter.
Such a popular piece of music, Cavatina from The Deer Hunter, written by Stanley Myers, arranged for brass band by Derek Broadbent and played there for Dot in Beverly by the Shepherd Group Band. Another arrangement by Derek Broadbent coming up now. We've got a 70th birthday this week and uh, I've had a, a lovely message from our listener Joanna Kay in Silsden. Joanna says, I have another request for my lovely husband, Peter. Peter Kay? The one and only, she says, and in my view, is the original and the best and is equally funny. It leaves us all laughing and always leaves people with a smile on their face. That's what it's all about. She says he's a joy to live with most of the time, aren't we all? He's going to be 70 in mid-July. He's an extremely passionate Yorkshireman and it would be great if he could play the Yorkshire anthem, of course, on Il Clamour Bartat. Let's hear Derek's arrangement, played here by the CWS Glasgow Band. I like this, it's really catchy. Very happy 70th birthday to Peter Kay. Yes, the man himself in Silsden. Thanks to Peter's wife, Joanna, for that request. Il Clamour was arranged by Derek Broadbent and played by the CWS Glasgow Band. What are we talking about this week? Well, I've been making lists for a little while. Some of the things that keep cropping up. And, uh, you know, they're just general observations. Some people will call them moans, that, and that's fine if that's what you do. Um, but they're just Oily's observations. Here we go. It's really just a list of everyday things that present themselves in people's lives. And you go, really? Online booking fees. Now, I get really cross with this because you're doing the work. It's self-service and you will get an email to print tickets off at your expense. So why is there a booking fee? Why is it that there's a booking fee? You know, you go and book a, 
a theatre ticket, and up comes a booking fee for a, a few pounds. And this, you know, these theatre tickets are not cheap now. Let's face it. You can go to a show in London now, and the best seats, anything from ninety pounds upwards, upwards, and upwards. Why are the fees? Just include it in the ticket price. Service charges. You go into a restaurant, and there's a percentage discretionary, okay, uh, but nevertheless a service charge added to the bill. It started off in America, did this, and it's creeping in here in the UK as well, particularly in the bigger cities, and you're presented with a machine to pay on your card. And there's usually four boxes. How much do you want to tip? I and mean, one of them is zero, um, but you shouldn't be forced into tipping. It should be up to you. If you've had good service, you, you know, I do. I, I always tip if I've had good service, but if I've had bad service, then no. Hospital parking. Now, unfortunately, my little grandson... Um, had a bit of an accident the other week. He's, he was fine, but he had to go to A&E. And it was 7pm in the evening, and it was 2am before they left the hospital with him. And they were charged £8 to park the car for an A&E situation. Um, I think that's utterly disgusting, really, at 7 o'clock on a night for someone who's in need. And I also don't think it's fair that the, the lovely staff who look after people in, in the time of need, have to pay to park their car at work. Uh, I don't agree with that. That's my own view. We're lowering your energy costs. Yes, I got this email the other week. Wonderful. From the 1st of July, your energy bills are coming down. Well, they will be. It's summer. We don't use much energy in summer anyway, do we? But I'll bet you anything that I get an email in October or November saying that they're going back up again. It's a play on words, and it happens every year. Final one for now, car insurance. Um, one of my daughters has just had to re renew or rearrange her annual car insurance, and it has nearly doubled in price. The, 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 re the renewal notice came through, and it was almost double. Look after your existing customers rather than trying to get new ones would be my message to the people out there who run any business, really. Um, we ended up getting it slightly less than what it was last year just by shopping around, you know, full no claims discount and all this. And they're starting to take all sorts of things into consideration, these insurance companies now. They basically only want clean business. More of these to come in a little while, uh, but now coming up, what, oh yeah, who have we got here? Our Becky. Our Becky's going to New York in December. Have you been to New York, Oily? I have. I've been several times, but I've never been in December when the Christmas tree is up at Rockefeller and the ice rink. I've been in November and I saw them building it. And I would like to go, but it's a bit cold for me at that time of year. I don't like cold weather. I really don't like it. Becky says it's my first visit. Can you play something which is suitable for a trip to New York? Well, this absolutely is. Uh, another great arrangement for Brass Band by Alan Fernie. I'm actually playing on this recording as well with the Lindley Band. This is called Broadway Spectacular.
Broadway Spectacular by Alan Fernie and the Lindley Band were playing there for Becky, who is going to New York in December. She absolutely can't wait to see the wonderful Christmas tree and the ice rink at Rockefeller. Sensational. It's a fabulous city. Have a great time, Becky. Thank you very much indeed. Andy in Wolverhampton has been in touch on the Facebook group. Yorkshire Brass is the name of the Facebook group. If you're not a member, pop onto Facebook, type in Yorkshire Brass. You'll come up with our page. Send a request to join the group and then you can chat with like-minded people about everything and anything brass banding. Andy is a bass trombone player and wants to hear this wonderful solo played here by Mark Frost with the Brickhouse and Rastrick Band. Paint Your Wagon was the movie which this particular music came from. Lerner and Lerva, the great duo together, made this song and it works so well for bass trombone. It really, really does. It's as low as it gets. Here we go with Wandering Star. the year 1970 just about lee marvin with the gravelly voice got in the charts didn't know that song wandering star the brass band version excellently played by mark frost with the brickhouse and rastrick band for andy in wolverhampton paint your wagon was indeed the film which wandering star came from next up we're going to blackers how do dino 
haven't heard from you for a while, my friend. Hope you're doing really well. Uh, Dean says, I used to love this particular programme on TV. After Grandstand and the local news on a Saturday tea time, I was absolutely besotted with the particular car that this character used to walk into at the beginning and the end of the programme. Could I please hear the music from the Pink Panther? Well, you certainly can. This is called In the Pink... The music of Henry Mancini has been arranged for brass band by Mark Jackson and the Yorkshire Imperial Band are playing. <laughs> The Yorkshire Imperial Band playing the music of Henry Mancini arranged for brass band by Mark Jackson. The theme to the Pink Panther, it's called In the Pink on that arrangement and it's for Dino in Blackpool. Yes, that car. I used to love the car. I used to love the Pink Panther show. And not just the Pink Panther. Inspector Clouseur, hello. He was there every week, Jeune. I used to love it. Absolutely love Saturday tea times on the TV. Now then, we're going to the quiet piece of music for this week and Laura has been in touch all the way from Hobart in Tasmania in Australia. Good day Ollie, how do? Uh, it's winter here, well it feels like winter here where we are at the minute, the weather's been absolutely appalling hasn't it for some time now. Anyway, Laura says for your quiet slot one week at uh, 
the Australian winter period. Could you please play this lovely piece of music for me? It's written by Vivaldi and another arrangement back to Howard Snell. We started the show with Howard Snell with this piece of music that was going so fast and this is a complete contrast. This is from the Four Seasons. It's called Winter and the United Corp Yorkshire Band are playing here. Howard Snell's lovely arrangement of the music of Vivaldi Winter from the Four Seasons was played there by the United Corp Yorkshire Band for Laura in Hobart, Tasmania, where it is indeed winter. Back to this list of observations, witters, natters, silly little things, uh, really, but they can be really irritating. Air freshener, deodorant, you buy it in a spray can, and let's say it says 300 ml for the, the size of the thing. Try getting the last 50 mils out of it. The button stops working in half the cases as well. They're just not, it's not good value. If you, if you, if you go in 300 mil and you can't get the last bit out, they should put 320 in it. Uh, big box, small tube. Somebody was talking about this the other day. You get this big box of toothpaste and then when you get the actual toothpaste tube from inside, it's about half the size of the box. It's the same length. Um, but it really is a bit of a play on words is that one. Uh, razor blades. This is one of my old, all time annoyances really because, uh, they're on version 5.25.7 or something. They know now what they're going to sell you in razor blades in five years' time, but we've got to go through 16 different versions between now and then. 
Um, razor blades are razor blades, but th th yeah, there's good and there's bad. Um, but how, how, how bad must version 1 have been? You know, if you're on version 5.25 now. Real Ale. Let's go down this one. Real Ale. Um, I love a pint, as, as I'm sure you all know. Uh, but sometimes you get served a pint and it's got this really big collar on it, especially when you when it's on the hand pull. And um, the, the dear late Major, those of you who remember me from the BBC, uh, the Major took exception. But I can take that back, it's got a collar like a bull mastiff. Vickers collar, he used to call it. Uh, a short measure. A, a special meal night, you go out for a meal, and, and I love eating out. And somebody was telling me the other week that they'd been to their local pub and it was two for £20 one Tuesday night. Um, from any section of the menu, two main courses for £20. In reality, what happened was there were smaller portions. Is that right? I'm not sure that it is, because if, what they're saying is if they went in at the weekend, the fish and chips, the fish was absolutely way bigger on the weekend than it was during the week. So it's a bit naughty. What we got coming up next to take us to halfway? Philip Humphreys. Hello, dear boy. How are you? And uh, yes, a tick on your side. Your Stuart's had a lot of ticks recently from his choices. And I think, you, are you feeling a bit left out, Philip? Maybe. Uh, anyway, you have chosen a fabulous, fabulous soundtrack. Uh, this programme first broadcast in Canada on CTV on the 6th of September 1966. So it's about as old as I am. And then a couple of days later on NBC in the USA. The franchise is still going to this day. And the music here was written by Alexander Courage. Thomas Doss made this brilliant arrangement for Brass Band. And the Corey Band are playing for you, Philip. This is the magnificent theme from Star Trek.
arrangement by Thomas Doss of the music of Alexander Courage. That was the theme from the magnificent series Star Trek, the Corey Band, playing there for regular listener Philip Humphreys of the Egremont Town Band. That takes us to halfway this week, and we're starting uh, the second part with a film theme. Still from the 1960s, actually, this music. It made some good music in the 60s, you know. Some good things happened in the 60s. This was written by Dmitry Tiomkin, and again, the Corey Band are playing. It was a 1961 war action film, which starred Gregory Peck, David Niven, Anthony Quinn, and Richard Harris, Mr. MacArthur Park himself. Here we go with the Corey Band and the music from that 1961 film, The Guns of Navarone. <laughs> Music of Dmitry Tionkin, the Cory Band, playing The Guns of Navarone. Brilliant film from 1961. Pete and Ilkley made that request to start the second part of this week's A Bit More Yorkshire Brass Off. Thanks from me, David Hoyle, to all of you for your request. Yorkshirebrass at gmail.com, the email address that you need to use. Elaine in Halifax did that. Thoroughly enjoyed with Friday Oily. Hope you did. I certainly did. We had a good night. We had a really good night. Uh, this March, I think I heard just the once... And it is a bit underplayed, says Elaine. I agree. This is another one by George Allen. Not one of his most famous ones, obviously. Uh, or his most liked ones, but I really like this. It's a great choice. The Barnard Castle Band are playing. Barnard Castle, where do I remember that from, I wonder? Let's have a listen to the brilliant March, Raby. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Barnard Castle Band playing George Allen's March for Raby, Elaine in Halifax, with that particular request. Elaine says, I'll be going to Whit Friday next year as well. I will as well. Absolutely. Best night of the year. Best free show on earth. Another solo coming up now. Derek in East Byerley. 
has made this particular request. The music is by Thomas Lear, says Derek, and I do believe there is a recording of Morgan Griffiths playing the euphonium solo on this one. Certainly, absolutely, Morgan's with the fairy band on this recording of Shylock. <laughs> Thank you. 
What a grand piece of music that is. It's called Shylock, written by Thomas Lear and Morgan Griffiths, the euphonium soloist with the fairy band. That was for the uh, lovely Derek in East Bailey says some really lovely things about the show. Derek, thank you very much indeed for the communication. John and Sue in Hull, they've got a, a wedding anniversary coming up. Happy anniversary to you both. 36 years this time, says John, and she doesn't look a day older. Good, good lass. Um, now, this is our heritage track of the week. Peter Green made the composition and i just think this works so well for brass band it's underplayed very very much the lockwood band sadly no longer with us peter kitson conducting on this recording of black magic woman <laughs> Very happy 36th wedding anniversary to John and Sue in Hull. That was Peter Green's Black Magic Woman, played by the Lockwood Band, remastered from an LP, our heritage recording of the week. From Hull to Barnsley, how do Dave? How do Dave? That's what it says. How do Dave? Good lad, good lad. Um, the Brighouse and Rastrick Band is my request, says Dave, and I'd love to hear this piece of music played in the show. I know you've played it before, but it's different to many brass band pieces of music. Different, uh, it's called the Symphonic Foxtrot, written by Carl Rebrecht. It's not easy to play this, it's a great listen. It's called Samoom. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Brickhouse and Rastrick Band playing Karl Robrecht's Samoom. S-A-M-U-M. What does Samoom mean? Uh, it's a, a wind. It's a very local wind that blows in the Arabic areas. Jordan, Iraq, Syria, Sahara Desert, that sort of area. Uh, great piece of music. Absolutely super. Time for another solo. Now then, who have we got here? Paul's in Vancouver. We're going about a bit today, aren't we? Paul in Vancouver says, could you please play me this piece of music by a Brazilian composer who I can't pronounce, but will you have a go at it, Oily? I will. His name is Zaquinha de Abra, and we're going to hear Jim Hayes on the cornet here with the Cooperative Funeral Care Band. Brilliant piece of music. Tico Tico. <laughs>
brilliant Jim Hayes with the cooperative Funeral Care Band, playing the music of Zaquina de Abra, the Brazilian composer. That was Tico Tico. What is Tico Tico? It's an American sparrow, which is found in areas such as southeast Mexico. You learn something every day, don't you? Now then, Helen in Droylston. Happy birthday to you, Helen, this week. You are going to be 50. Wow. Uh, you would like to hear... 80s pop, you sent me a list of artists that you really like, and right there at the top is Michael Jackson. Well, I've got a montage for you. A montage arranged by Frank Bernhardt's and played here by our friends from Belgium, Brass Band Willybrook. It's called King of Pop, all about Michael Jackson. <laughs> Thank you. 
Michael Jackson, King of Pop, arranged by Frank Bernard and played by brass band Willie Brook. 80s pop music, please, said Helen in Droylesden as I celebrate my 50th birthday. Helen, have a fabulous birthday. Know you're having a party. Sure you'll enjoy that too. Michael Jackson was right up there on the top of the list that you sent in of performers from the 1980s. You've got a great taste in music, by the way. Very similar to mine. Test piece time now. Tony and Driglington has chosen this one. A Gilbert Vinter classic oily, please if I may ask you to play this. Uh, this is another Heritage recording, again from an LP record. Hope you're going to enjoy it. The National Youth Brass Band of Great Britain are playing on this one. Tony and Driglington has chosen Triumphant Rhapsody as this week's test piece. <laughs>
Triumphant Rhapsody by Gilbert Vinter, this week's test piece, chosen by Tony in Driglington, was played by the National Youth Brass Band of Great Britain. Let me just finish this list off of observations, natters, whingers. Um, I once paid a, a penny each way for a flight. Uh, and only went there for a day, it was to Dublin and back. And there were some people sat behind us and they'd paid a, a penny each as well, each way. And then ordered six gin and tonics and it cost them nine pounds for a gin and tonic and the gin was served in like a little plastic bubble that you had to burst um, yeah these airline things like 45 pounds to put a bag on a flight and 13 pound to sit together it all adds up anything in an airport adds up really the prices are just so expensive uh, i just go for the meal deal when i'm getting on board a, a plane on a short flight because that's the best value there is in an airport how about in a concert hall you go in don't you looking forward to the event that you're going and and i went to see peter k the other week and the two pints of beer one of those big plastic glasses that when you get hold of it the beer comes over the top anyway and ends up halfway down your trousers 18 pounds 18 quid for a two pinter in a plastic glass i made it last all night a pitcher of beer you get this as well sometimes um especially abroad you see this thing come up and it's advertising this big jug of beer and then when it comes to your table it's got this real frothy head on it and when you it doesn't have four pints of beer in it i think that's a bit of a con mini bar a mini bar in a hotel sometimes i just look at them and i go how much some of the prices in mini bars are crazy deck chairs on the beach now, I, I don't want, I'm not one of these people who wants to carry a deck chair around all day with me. I was in Cornwall the other week and it was 150 an hour for one of those striped wooden deck chairs, which I didn't think was so bad really. It was a lovely day and people were just sitting there enjoying the, the lovely harbour down there. So I'm quite, happy, quite happily with that. Uh, and the final one, rail tickets. How is it? It cost me £14 to go to Manchester. And it cost me £27 to go to York from the same station. And the journey time is exactly the same. I don't get that. I would like to see the railways go back into public ownership 
And if they do, I just hope they make a better job of the pork pies than they used to do. They used to be awful, didn't they? British Rail pork pies. Oh dear. Alison in Huddersfield. Hymn tune time. You've chosen a great arrangement of a very popular hymn indeed. Gough Richards made this arrangement and the Wingates band are playing Crimmond. The penultimate piece on a bit more Yorkshire brass every week is always our hymn tune. That was Crimmond, arranged by Gough Richards and chosen by Alison in Huddersfield, played by the Wingates Band. Stephen in Honley is seeing us out as he describes it today with a fabulous piece of music which he describes as an absolute blockbuster. I'd like to hear the Black Dyke Band recording of this, says Stephen, if at all possible. No problem whatsoever. This is an arrangement by Stephen Roberts of the music of Gustav Holst. It's Jupiter from the planets. Thanks again from me, David Hoyle, for listening this week. I'll see you next week with show number 221. Ta-ra!
Thank you.